Well, hey there, garbage lovers, and welcome to another trash talking episode of This Show Is Not Rubbish. So, this episode may contain fireballs. Uh huh, exciting, right? Although, to be perfectly clear, we're talking miniature fireballs. But don't worry, they're still pretty spectacular. Albeit spectacular on an itty bitty little scale. Now to make these fireballs, I'm going to need a very simple thing that most people tend to absently throw away. So, what you got for us, thing? How appealing! Get it? Orange peel? How appealing? Because of the peel? No? Not funny? Let me try again then. Uh, oh, why didn't the orange win the race? Because it ran out of juice. Because oranges are full of juice? Yeah, no, okay, I'll try one more. What rhymes with orange? No, it doesn't. You know what? I think my jokes might be a bit rubbish, but this show is definitely not rubbish. So let's press on with some trashy facts. So which thing do you think was named orange first? The fruit or the colour? That is, is an orange called an orange because it's orange or is orange called orange because of the orange? Well, what do you reckon? I'll give you a few moments to have a little think. And the answer is, the fruit was named first. The colour was originally called yellow red and was later called orange after the fruit. <laughs> True or false? The navel orange gets its name from the fact that its bottom looks like a belly button, with navel being another name for a belly button. Well, what do you think? So, true or false? And the answer is true. The belly button like pit is actually part of a small baby fruit growing inside the bigger fruit. Can you think of a word that rhymes with orange? I'll give you a few moments. can you? In fact, it's often said that there are no words that rhyme with orange, but there is one. Sporage, which is a case, capsule or container in which spores are produced by an organism. Your challenge now, of course, is to rhyme sporange with orange in a poem. Good luck with that. Time for some fireballs. Miniature fireballs. Fabulous miniature fireballs. Whoa. How awesome! Of course, if you'd like to try this little experiment, then make sure you get an adult to help you out. Fire should always be treated with caution and respect. The outer layer of an orange peel, the bit that's orange, is called the flavido. Inside the flavido are itty bitty oil sacs. Bending the peel creates pressure inside the peel that causes the oil sacs to explosively rupture, shooting out their flammable contents. We call this a microjet. There's only a few examples of microjets found in nature. One allows a species of termite to spit a thick toxic saliva, and another enables a spider to shoot liquid silk from its vibrating fangs. To be honest, both of those things sound completely terrifying. <laughs> Scientists have only just started studying orange peel microjets. Who knows what applications they might discover? Oh, and here's some advice for you. Never eat an orange near a balloon. 
Why not? Well, stick around until after the next section of the episode and I'll show you. The results are explosive. In the meantime, the great big really important question is, once you've squeezed the last bit of oil from your orange peel, into which bin should you chuck it? It's time to play a little game I like to call Witch Bin. So our choices, as always, are a general curbside waste bin, a curbside recycling bin, a curbside green bin, or some other bin or place. Well, what do you reckon? Into which bin should we throw our orange peel? I'll give you a few moments to have a think. So have you thunk of an answer? Did you say green waste? Well, if you did, then you would be correct. Or possibly incorrect. A who and a hey and a what now? <laughs> well, it all depends on where you live. Lots of councils around Australia accept food scraps in green curbside bins, but not all. If your council does accept food scraps, then they might ask you to simply throw them in or wrap them in a sheet of newspaper or two and then throw them in. Other councils might ask you to use a compostable bag, while some councils might ask you to absolutely definitely not use a bag. But before you throw out your peel, why not consider a little baking instead? Some finely grated orange rind or zest added to a cake batter or cookie dough can add a fabulously zingy flavour. So, why should you never eat oranges near a balloon? That's why. The principal component of orange oil is a chemical called limonene, a kind of hydrocarbon. Balloons are made from rubber, also a hydrocarbon. Like dissolves like, so the limonene dissolves the rubber and the balloon explodes. The limonene in orange oil can be used to dissolve all sorts of things, like the sticky bit from sticky labels. Recycling and waste management are evolving sciences, and rules vary from country to country, city to city, and council to council. Always check with your local council as to what thing should go in which bin. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and then head over to our website and social media pages for more garbagey goodness.